In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use GIMP to make text that looks like it's made out of rock or stone. Let's start by creating a new project. So go to the File menu and select New. I'm using a width of 640 and a height of 400. Now let's add the text. So click on the Text tool, then click right here to set the font and select Sans Bold. Then set the text size. The text size that you use depends on how many characters are in the words that you're going to use. A text size of 200 will work for me. Now click in the Canvas area and type your text. Then click on the Move tool and drag the text. You'll want to position the text a little bit to the left of the center. And now we need to make a duplicate of this text layer, so click on the Duplicate button. We won't need this original text until later, so for now, click this button that looks like an eye to turn off its visibility. Next, we need to select the outline of the text. So right-click on the top text layer and select Alpha to Selection. You can see now that the outline of the text is selected. Now from the Select menu, select Grow. Set this value to 2 and click OK. This expanded our selection a little bit. The reason I expanded it is because I'm going to be filling in the selected area with a pattern. If I don't expand the selection, then some of the text edge may be left behind after the area is filled. To fill the selection, click on the Bucket Fill tool. Set the fill type to Pattern Fill. Then click here to select the pattern. Then press this button to view the patterns as a list. Then scroll through the patterns until you find dried mud, and then click on it. Next, click on Fill Whole Selection. Now click inside the selected area to fill it with the pattern. Now we're going to change this fill pattern into a black and white image. So from the Colors menu, select Threshold. Moving this slider will control the amount of black and white in the image. You can also control it by entering a value here. I've found that a value of 170 works well. Now click OK. We need to make a duplicate of this layer, so click the Duplicate button. Now go to the Filters menu and select Artistic, and then Oilify. We'll use all of the default values, so just click OK. Now from the Colors menu, select Invert. Then turn the selection off by going to the Select menu and select None. You can see here that we roughened the edges of the text a little. This also changed the inside of the text as well. Now we're going to select only the black areas. So click on the Select by Color tool. I'll use the default values here. Then click on the black area inside of the text. Now only the black areas are selected. Next, from the Select menu, select Invert to invert the selection. Now what we have selected is everything that is not black. Now that we have our selection, we no longer need this top layer, so click on the Delete button to delete it. Now we're going to use this selection to remove a portion of the current layer. So make sure that the top layer is selected, and then from the Edit menu, select Clear. It's hard to see what we've just done because the background is white, so I'll temporarily turn off the background layer. I do this by clicking the button that looks like an eye. If you look close, you can see that the edges are roughened up a little. I'll turn the background layer back on now. Next, we need to remove the selection, so from the Select menu, select None. Now make sure that the top layer is selected, and then go to the Filters menu and select Light and Shadow, and then Lighting Effects. Then click on the Bump Map tab. Then click here to add a check mark next to Enable Bump Mapping. This name right here should match the layer name over here. In the Preview window, you should see a blue dot that represents the light source. Make sure that it's located just above your text. If it isn't, then just click and drag it to a new spot. Now click the OK button. Now we're going to bevel the edges. So from the Filters menu, select Decor, and then Add Bevel. Change the Thickness value to 7. 
Then click here to remove the check mark that's next to Work on Copy. Then click OK. We're going to apply this filter two more times, so click on the Filters menu. Since the bevel filter is the last filter that we used, we can find it right here. So click on Repeat Add Bevel. Then do this one more time. Next we're going to add a rough texture to the smooth surfaces. So from the Filters menu, select Artistic and then Clothify. Set the elevation value to 90 and set the depth to 7. Then click OK. Now let's add some color. So from the Colors menu, select Colorize. Set the hue and saturation values to 36. Set the lightness to minus 11. Then click OK. You'll notice now that there are places in the text where the white background is showing through. So come over here and turn on the middle layer by clicking right here. This layer has our original black text that we made at the beginning. We're going to use this black text to prevent the white background from showing through and also to add a slight shadow around the outside of the text. We can do this by adding a blur to the black text. So make sure that the middle layer is selected. Then from the Filters menu, select Blur and then Gaussian Blur. Set both the horizontal and vertical values to 15 and then click OK. Now we're going to give the text a little more depth. So click on the top layer to select it. Then from the Filters menu, select Light and Shadow, and then Drop Shadow. We're not going to use this filter to add a shadow, but instead we want it to look like the side of the text. So set the Opacity to 100, also set Offset Y to 0, and set the Blur Radius to 3. Then click OK. Now we have our finished text. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.